Warning, the show you are about to listen to contains spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, everybody. It's been two goddamn weeks, but now we're back. I am Woo! your host. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and who you heard right there is my co-host, and she is... I am Namio. What? Yes, so yes, it's been two weeks, got a lot of stuff to cover, because... Holy shit, and it was an eventful two weeks. Oh, yeah. We mentioned the last time there was near near accidental incest. Yeah. <laughs> Averted. Thank, thank, thankfully to uh, fucking Levi and, 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 and his stuff kind of diffusing the situation a little bit. Thankfully. <laughs> oh my god, he's still fucking annoying, though. Annoying <clears throat> and, and a manipulative bastard. Because he's he's pressuring Maxie to kick Nathan out, even though there there's no place no other place for Nathan to go because he's got the negative energy in him. And, yeah. uh, and it's like, you know what? Negative energy or not, fucker still needs a place to stay. Plus, and the lease was for yeah, yeah. The lease was still for two like, weeks left on his lease. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm yeah, he kind of needs a place, especially with everything that's been hit with him, that's that he's been hit with, like yeah. because he spent you know because Britt spent the night there. He when he told Madeline, and Madeline's like, oh shit, you know, <laughs> Basil is fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> I told you so. <laughs> it's like yeah. So uh, so Madeline has to tell Nathan everything. And Nathan's like, holy shit. I just found out my mother is Liesl Obrecht. Yeah. And then I nearly banged my sister. <laughs> it's just, wow. Like you do in GH land. Of course. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, but, but, and that's, yeah. yeah. And of course, the majority of the other two weeks is like Nate trying to get a hold of her and say, and basically say, hey, I'm your brother. You know. We have the same goddamn mother. I wonder. I wonder who his father is, though, because. Because uh, I mean, if, if the father was uh, um, uh, Victor, I mean, it just went went right out of my head. Phazon, yes. Uh, if it, if his father was Phazon, you would think that. Uh, um, you would think Elfrest that Phazon would have kept him, yeah. and Phazon would have wanted to keep him. Yeah. But for some reason, she had to leave it behind with Madeline. Don't know why yet. And and Obrecht, give her credit, you know, probably was not the easiest decision for her. But apparently, her love for Faison was stronger than the love for her son. And with her being with Faison, of course, it's going to be dangerous as fuck. Yes. So you know, if if nothing else, it's yeah. This, I, I need to be doing this. I, I cannot be in the line of fire here, you know. Which, eh, ju nice justification, but eh, whatever. And Dante has been seriously considering, at least, you know, Obrecht's uh, proposal because supposedly Obrecht has one more embryo, which, as Britt has noted, she most likely has because Obrecht doesn't make empty threats yeah yeah that was that was you know the first thing that you know once Britt got over kind of the shock uh she was like you know my mother does not make i have threats yeah and you know basically yeah you should probably listen to it yeah so this is this is gonna be a fun thing oh god and ned ned returns to poor charles yay ned <laughs> And immediately uh, runs afoul of Luke. Of course. Because, well, hey, you know, Luke, he, he's been a gold digger around Tracy before. Luke is supposedly reformed, except not really, because this is not really Luke, and the, not Luke is working with Julian Jerome, you know, and bringing drugs into Port Charles. Something I've... I, I've seen, you know, that one scene, however long ago it was, with Luke and Julian in the art gallery. Julian was mm -hmm. clearly uncomfortable about this. Yes. But and apparently, his want to get rid of Sonny is more powerful than his 
than his ethics at this point. I think it's less about, like, for Julian, I think it's less about wanting to get rid of Sonny at this point and more he answers to not Luke. Yeah. But that, and that's what I'm wondering. Who does he answer to? I'm willing to bet it's either somebody from the WSB or the DVX. Either one of those two. The reason why I'm saying WSB is because they're the ones who, you know, you, you got Julian Jerome off and, and, and repaired and, and healed up and everything, changed his identity and all of that. So I wonder who it is. I mean, could it be – I mean, and I, I wonder how Victor would play into all of this since he is the head of the WSB. But who else from the WSB would have a beef against Sonny Corinthos? That's what I wonder. I don't know. Or it could be just, hey, you know, this guy is, is this guy is like doing illegal shit, and we're supposed to be the good guys, so we need to do something so about this. So let's bring drugs into Port Charles. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, now now that now that that's kind of running through, it's like, eh. uh, or it could be just not Luke going rogue on that particular point. I don't know. It's yeah, that one's probably a stretch, <laughs> and every fan out there is like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> oh dear but we but, do yeah. find out we do now know what jordan had been into in maryland and why she was gone for two years is because she was in prison for drug trafficking yeah and supposedly she was really good at it at least until she got caught and now that she's out the first thing she tries to do is First thing she does is get a, a job at uh, Ava's gallery and then corner Julian and be like, hey, I can help you traffic drugs. I'm super good at it. I was in jail for it. Yeah. And, and of course, Julian is naturally suspicious. Are you wearing a wire? And especially more suspicious when she's talking about it and the cops show up, granted for a totally different reason, which we'll get into yeah. in a minute. But still, he's like, okay, you, you what, what, what the, the fuck? And, and, and of course... How do you prove you're not wearing a wire? Bye bye shirt, or at least open the shirt. Because <laughs> there you Match go. Match the boobies. Yep. <laughs> yes, uh, but don't worry. There, there's another question about wire, like later on, you know, within this stuff that also results in at least kind of a flash, or, or at least, kind of. yeah. So it, it it is not limited to just her. It, it's male and female fan service here, you or at least. It. Or at least partially. Uh, but what was... Equal act- opportunity objectification. Yes. <laughs> oh. Oh, God. So where else do we go? Where else do we go now? Nicholas. He he, he is... He told Elizabeth, hey, you know what? You know what? You know, come stay with me. Elizabeth's like, oh, okay. Meanwhile, Brett's overhearing this, and she's like, oh, shit. Yeah. It's It's like... I can really sim- I can still sympathize with Brit. Yeah, she has done horrible things, but at least she's not irredeemable. Yeah, she still is you not know. irredeemable. A lot and of she, you know, she she is you know coming to terms with you know getting her just desserts, and she you know she she's not arguing. Yeah, and and it's like everybody's like ah, and she's like I'm not arguing with you. I'm not arguing with you. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's it's at a point where I kind of want to just tell everybody back the fuck off of her. She know. she knows what she's doing. She wants to atone for shit. Now shut up and let her atone, you bastards. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, that that's mm, let's see where else is there. Nicholas has Elizabeth move in with Cameron, of course, because well you know we know how Cameron and Spencer are right now because oh my god Emma. And yes. Spencer, I've got to say, he is a sneaky and wily little boy. He, he is so <laughs> fucking adorable. Yes. Okay, because And I'm sorry, but I kind of wanted to smack Nicholas. And um, there was a, uh, a scene where he was talking with Elizabeth. And he was like, you know, Spencer's got this idea into his head that, you know, Luke is after Sonny. Uh, you know, it's just like that damn chupacabra, and Elizabeth's like, well, there kind of was a chupacabra. Yeah, I, th- I think that was in the news, that, that that was some kind of chupacabra thing, like like actual real-world news, not, not in No, universe. no, just there, that uh, he wasn't making up that there was something in the stables. 
Like yeah. that's what that's what she meant. Is yeah. you know, Heather Weber was in the stables. I mean, it didn't come out of nowhere. This is true. Uh, and so, like, I'm I'm actually finding it really annoying that he's just dismissing Spencer out of hand. But of course, he has to because that's going to make it more drama to drama. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's so cute because you know. Spencer basically like strong arms his uh, his driver uh, when he's supposed to be taking Spencer to school into first going uh, by to see Sonny and Sonny uh, is having his own issues and so he doesn't answer the door and so Spencer decides to take matters into his own hands and go confront Luke and it's the most adorable thing in the world because he's this little bitty kid and he goes up in, in um, <clears throat> uh, the Quartermain mansion, and he says, turn around and face your accuser. Yes, that is <laughs> both adorable and badass at the same time. And, and not Luke is like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and you know what? Luke takes him seriously. Yes. Well... You know, and that's the thing, it, like, you know, Spencer heard everything, and he knows what's going on. Mm-hmm. And so, but also Spencer is stupid because he he tells Luke everything he knows. Yeah. Everything, and gives Luke ammunition by talking about Emma. And yeah. so Luke, Luke says, you know what, you better keep your mouth shut. Or I'm going to hurt Emma. Yeah, which that there's another flag for the out of character Luke right there, because I don't remember Luke like actual Luke threatening a child. Nobody thre- nobody threatens a child like I don't I don't think even Julian would do that. No, Ava might. If, if, yeah. even, if, if, you know, but we'll get to her. We will get to her. Yes. Uh, uh, so let's let's talk about Sunny. Uh, briefly because i have to say um i like aj so much more now that he is dead (laughs) because he is fucking hilarious he is straight up haunting sunny Mm -hmm. and i love like i love the the choice that they made of having this giant you know, garish blood stain on the front of his shirt as he's <laughs> as he's mm-hmm. just haunting Sonny. And he just like <laughs> he's just trolling, man. He's yes. Just, you know, I'm like fucking yes. with Sonny's head and you know, won't leave him alone. Is heckling him through all of his like uh daily interactions. Yeah, I mean I I'm I am just I am loving this. It's like Sonny, drink your Catholic guilt. Drink it. Yeah. Drink it all. Om nom 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 nom. <laughs> drink all your Catholic guilt. All of it. And, it's just, and it's even cost him it's it's been costing him Olivia. And, and that was the reason why why he spent he wouldn't answer the role for Spencer, and Spencer even heard him yell, Go away. Yeah. You know, which which Sonny does make it up and, and explain things to Spencer later. You know, so he, that things are cool on that front, but just Sonny, just. <laughs> but you know, AJ was so like whiny and uh, you know, just self-centered and uh, you know, poor little meing all over the place when he was alive. But now that he's dead, he's so much more happy and confident. Yeah, like. I mean, dying was the best thing that ever happened to him. Yeah, I I really wish that the writers had given him that confidence in life. I know, right? You know, just just you know, or at least more so, because at least from what I'm from what I'm remembering, or, or maybe it's some the way I want to remember it. But when he was on top with ELQ and everything, he had more confidence. Yeah. And then everything came crashing down, and his self-esteem and his ego and everything else went with it, unfortunately. Yeah. 
which uh, god damn it writers don't do this <laughs> i hate i hate that they did this but you yeah. know i still like the fact that he's trolling the hell out of sunny yes oh uh, and uh, and of course olivia moves out because you know he, he bitches at her and, and and he's like fuck but eh, you know but then he realizes that when ava's there aj goes away Mm. And yes, this does come to a bit of a head by the end of of of, of this uh, particular time uh, period. Uh, if you'll get, if, uh, but but we'll get yeah. to that later. But getting back to not Luke, like he's getting seriously creepy about Kiki. Yeah, like he like he waits. He like stalks her. He waits outside of her apartments mm -hmm. and waits until silas and rafe have left and then like comes up and gets her alone and starts to try and to touch her and she kicks his fucking ass and it's awesome it is it's like it's it's, it's like and, and you know what i'm not even gonna mince words he i know what he you know what he was going for he was gonna try and rape her he was yeah and he doesn't have the excuse of thinking his life is over and being piss ass drunk so, you know, he is totally sober, three sheets to the wind. Just, just, that might be a contradiction. Point yes. is, he was, he was in control of his he mind exactly and his body. exactly what he was doing. Yes. <clears throat> you know, and, uh, you know, I thought it was interesting because, like you said, Ned is there, and uh, he doesn't trust Luke for a second. Right. And, uh, you know, he thinks that, you know, Luke is after Tracy's money, which is true. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, he puts his foot down and he says, okay, you know what, if he's really changed and, uh, you know, he, uh, really is, you know, the man you say he is, he'll sign a prenup. And, you know, Ned actually gets to Tracy a little bit. And so Tracy asks Luke to sign the prenup and, oh my God, the emotional manipulation he goes through. Yeah, I mean, regular Luke is like, oh, whoa, he's just wow. All the gymnastics and Tracy's like, okay, um, oh, oh, my panties are wet. Okay, <laughs> oh, and but I mean, like it's it is masterful yes. how he how he manipulates her. You know, you know, first he's like he's like gives the, gives this puppy to look like you know. And starts talking about how he's so hurt that she doesn't trust him. He thought things were different, and you know, if that's the way things are gonna be, if he's if she still doesn't trust him, then uh, maybe they just sh shouldn't get married. And <clears throat> you know, basically, she you know he twists everything, and by the end of it, she's like, you know what? No, there's no way that you know we're having a prenup. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, you know, Ned is wrong. I love you, and we're going to do this, you know, right without a prenup. And as soon as she's gone, uh, Luke turns around and goes, sucker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then later when Ned confronts them again about the prenup, you know, they basically say, yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah. And Ned and Luke are alone. Luke tears up the prenup and then threatens to kill Ned if he gets in his way. Yeah. It's like, that is definitely not Luke. Definitely not Luke. And and the thing is, not Luke fesses up later and says, "Well, it was a little, it was a little bit of a hyperbole." Blah 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 blah. And then, oh, I like the plan. And then I was shocked as hell because what they wanted to do is they wanted to show Tracy what Luke was really up to when it yeah. involved Kiki. Yeah, because Morgan, you know, Kiki after the whole thing with with Luke called Morgan because she didn't want to get Michael involved because obviously Michael's dealing with a lot right now. Mm -hmm. But, I, and I do really love that, you know, she and Morgan have come to this place where they can just be friends and be on each other's side. And, you know, Morgan's been, you know, been aware of the Luke situation for a while and he was fucking pissed. And so, you know, the two of them are talking and, you know, Ned gets in on the conversation, and what I thought was really interesting was that they brought up the continuity. Mm -hmm. And he, he actually said, you know, Luke raped a woman, yeah. and later she married him, because uh, he was able to spin it into a seduction. 
And see, the thing is, I've re, I have revi, not revised, but reread the history. He didn't really spin it into a seduction. When it, when it happened, when when Luke had raped Laura, Luke was after it was done. Luke was like, "Holy shit, what have I done?" And Laura didn't want to go to the. I don't think she. I think she went to the authorities, but didn't name Luke. And I think at one point she was going to name mm-hmm. some other guy. Uh, I think it was Roy DeLuca. As the rapist, and 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 basically trying to protect Luke because you know she did feel for him, and you know even as a rape victim, I don't know if it was just from trauma or if it was just how she felt about him, but you know she wanted to keep him you know out of there because she knew he was not in his right mind yeah. at the time. Now again, I, I I have not watched the actual scenes like in a good long time. They they do they have replayed them every now and then. But, but you know, eventually, you know, they they you know he repented. He's like, yeah, I'm sorry. You know, you know, you know they they worked it out. Which of yeah. course not. Of course, a rape in real life doesn't always work out that way. And there are no really. <laughs> yeah, and 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 to the show's credit, later on in years when other rapes do happen, it's portrayed more realistically. Now that's not to say that what happened between Luke and Laura couldn't happen. Is just most likely very unlikely, I believe. Yeah. So and that that's keep in mind. This is what I'm what I what I'm guessing here on a lot of on a lot part on the most part here. Blah 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 yeah. blah. But yeah. <laughs> but you know, sometimes yeah. the victims can forget their, forgive rather their attackers and even love them and marry them. You know, helping him save the world and helping them take down a major mob boss can do that to somebody, you know? <laughs> you know, not in that order. It was reverse order. Oh, but yeah, so with all of that, with that bit of a backstory that Ned had told them, it, you know, albeit a little different because I don't think Luke intentionally spun it into a seduction at that point. Who knows? Maybe in recent years he might have but regardless, you know what had happened happened, and of course Geeky is shocked, and I think Morgan, I think both the kids were shocked there because hey, you know they're new, they didn't know the history, and yeah. so Ned is like, why don't you use Geeky as bait? And and I have Tracy watching from the terrace, and Morgan is like, oh no no no, and, Tra- and Kiki's like, no 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 no, I, I'm I'm all right. Remember, I kicked him in the balls when he tried to rape me. I yeah. can do it again. And so they get everything there. No, keep in mind, not Luke does not know that Tracy is out there, as far as we know. Well, I, you know, the thing is, you know, Kiki comes in and she's like, you know, let's talk about us. And I think that's probably what tipped him off that it was a setup. Mm-hmm. Was I think if she had gone in there still being hostile and being like, leave me the hell alone, she they probably would not have you know, figured out that it was a setup. But yeah, I, I really think that she tipped him off. Uh, which, yeah, right. which is, is very, very, very possible. I did not, I, when I first saw it, I didn't even think of that. Because when he started, you know, going off on his thing, you know, basically putting the blame on her when they are supposed, supposedly in private, I'm like, wait, how the fuck? But but you brought that up and it's like okay that's probably how the fuck he knew. <laughs> yeah, because you know Ned and Tracy are, are out on the terrace, and of course now Tracy you know, feels vindicated in her theory that Kiki is a low life slut after Luke, and after yeah. money. Yeah, it's like oh that's bad. <laughs> yeah. And then Morgan, eventually you know he and Kiki are, are kind of bonding and comforting each other. Because, hi, you know, some stressful shit has been going on. And Ava sees it and runs out and runs yeah, runs Morgan into Sunny a- later. Morgan and Ava have been having some weirdness. Like, Morgan was, uh, you know, all distrustful of her when she was, you know, running out to tell Silas about what she saw on the paper. And, you know... Ava's been uh, really paranoid about Morgan uh, care- still caring for Kiki. Mm-hmm. You know, they, then they've got this like mutual jealousy going on. That's just, I'm like, why? And it, it it seems like like it feels forced. It feels like it was forced into the narrative 
to you know ramp things up and lead and, to what we're going to talk about a little bit later. Yeah. Yeah. Oh and, yeah. You know, because you know they they have the funeral, mm-hmm. and you know at first, uh, you know Michael comes by and asks Sonny to come to the funeral, and Sonny doesn't want to go. He says it's uh, out of respect for Monica, but the real reason is because he feels guilty. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but in the end, he and Carly both do go, and you know, Monica, you know, lets them stay, even though she's not happy about them being there. Yeah, because uh, hey, because for Michael. Yeah, but uh, you know. Afterwards, Sonny is, you know, in AJ's crypt, and AJ is harassing him again. <laughs> yeah. Live with that guilt, Sonny, of what you have done. <laughs> and meanwhile, you know, Ava had been uh, trying to talk to Morgan because uh, she was there when Morgan got the call from, I think he, he, she was there when... Morgan got that call from Kiki, and now not only is she paranoid about Morgan still having feelings for, for Kiki, she's also worried about her daughter. Yeah. Because she doesn't know what's going on. And so, you know, she walks in on Morgan and Kiki hugging, and, you know, she suddenly feels betrayed, and she goes wandering off crying and winds up in the crypts. With Sunny, but we'll get to that. We will get to that. I want to build a little bit more on Ava because she has a okay. li- she's done a little bit more these past couple of weeks besides being jealous over Kiki, namely talking to Carlos about everything that's happened. You know, her killing Connie and then sending Carlos, which they managed to get some DNA off the blood off of the vase that Tracy used to just just bean him over the head, and mm. <laughs> and, and of course they're they're able to place him right there at the quarter mains and Carlos is like, oh shit. Yeah. And once he's in custody, which which that's the same point they got Carlos in custody at the same time that uh, Jordan was sitting there trying to prove herself to Julian. Mm-hmm. So so Carlos is sitting in custody and for the longest time no lawyer has shown up. Diane Miller is not showing up. For and and we find out later when she actually does show up as because she was out of town, she was not as readily available. Which is unfortunate for him, because he he's losing it. He's thinking Ava's going to betray him well, and, and, and throw you know, him under the, the bus. And once uh, Diane once Diane does get there, he she allows him to use the phone, and phone. yeah, well yeah, and he he's like, you know what? I'm surrounded by cops. You can't do shit to me. And Ava's like, oh, I can't do shit to you, but I can certainly take out that pretty little Sabrina of yours and that baby. And it's like, oh, shit. Yeah. Well, and you knew something was going to happen because, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, on the one hand, you had Ava using uh, Sabrina to, you know, threaten, threatening Sabrina to try and get Carlos to be quiet. And on the other hand, you had um, Luke, Luke. Mm-hmm. threatening Emma to keep Spencer quiet. And so, you know... And after, and you know, after like a checkup with the baby, in which Carlos comes and does his his little song and dance about how he doesn't love her and he's going to abandon her and blah 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 blah, you know the usual song and dance routine, you know before he got jailed or whatever. They mm. they have the recital at which point Spencer again sneaks out, even though he's been grounded. He snuck out, went to the recital to try and warn Emma. Emma doesn't believe him, naturally. Naturally, and of course but, she gets in more trouble. And she's so cute about the way that uh, that she uh, like, she's she's like the dialogue that they give her is so not things a child would say. She's basically like, yo, you need to move on and accept that I'm a Cameron now, and, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all this stuff, and it's so freaking cute. But yeah. you know, she you know she walks off and. She doesn't believe him, and then Nicholas catches him. Yep, and get and he's in big deep shit again, and 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 then as Patrick and Sabrina and Emma are driving home from the recital, some some jackass swerves into their lane and car accident. Yeah. Yeah, and of course it makes the news, which all of the relevant parties see, and. 
and Spencer is like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was interesting because he actually uh, paid Cameron so that he could use Cameron's phone, and he's all getting all ready to, you know, send the text to Sonny, telling him everything about Luke. Uh, and then he sees, you know, Emma on the TV standing there with uh, Anna and, uh, you know, telling the reporter that uh, someone forced them off the road. And he's like, oh, shit, basically. And, you know, call, you know, deletes the text and calls Luke to tell him, you know, I saw I saw what you did. Um, I promise I won't say anything. Just don't just don't hurt Emma. And yeah. Luke's like, and Luke, you know, he's like. You know, I'm glad we understand each other, basically. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I I will give them this. Out of Luke and Ava, when they both found out what happened from their, you know, when, when, when they're confronted about what happened, rather, they, they, they both give off the vibe that, yeah, they both, one of them definitely did it. Yeah. And it leaves you guessing as to either one. And that's, that's good. Yeah, that was, that was very well done. Mm hmm. Oh. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, and poor Sabrina. Yeah. Oh, because she, yeah, because you know, b- before the, because um, yeah, in in the wake of the crash, you know, Patrick uh, wakes up first, you know, sees that Emma's, you know, okay, and then you know he calls an ambulance, and you know Sabrina slowly regains consciousness, and she's like, I'm in a lot of pain. And so he gets her out of the car and onto the ground, and suddenly Britt shows up. Yeah, like you, you know, do. She's, she saw the car accident, um, and, you know, she gets there, she's like, oh my god, and, you know, uh, you know, Sabrina's like, there's, you know, something's wrong with the baby, and it turns out she's gone into premature labor. Yeah, and Britt's like, no, 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 we, we've got to deliver this baby right now. Yeah, it's we like, cannot they move didn't... You. They did not have a choice because by the by the time the paramedics got there, the baby was already crowning. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. And so we got we got we got to pop this little guy out, pop the guy out, and get everybody to the hospital. Sabrina's in the hospital. You know, last check she was fine, just hysterical about her baby. And yeah. meanwhile, Patrick and and Epiphany are getting up there and 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 getting the baby the attention. And I saw it, the baby just so small. It, it, did you, okay, I was watching. I didn't actually see a baby, like even a doll. All I saw was a bundle of rags that Patrick was holding up to his chest. And I'm like, can I put some effort into this, people? Come on, props department. <laughs> like, get a doll at least, you know, cover it with some Vaseline and fake blood, you know. Put. Give a little bit of effort for this. Um, yeah. But, you know, he, you know the, the actor was doing a good job of making it look like a very, very tiny bundle. Yes. You know, like a, like a preemie baby would be. Yes. So I guess there's that, but... Yes, so kudos to Jason Thompson right there. Yes. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, but yeah. So meanwhile, Carlos is in jail. And news about this reaches, you know, around to Carly and Franco. Who I am loving Franco more and more and more because you know he and Carly they have another argument about it and 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 she's like I'm gonna go I'm gonna go question him blah 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 and Franco's like no 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 fuck all that so she leaves for a little bit confronts Ava about something and then she comes back and Franco has trashed his room yes he is he has put graffiti all over the walls and he's like it's art yes. <laughs> And she's, and, you know, Carly is, yeah, you know, Olivia goes off to call the police, and Carly's absolutely flabbergasted. She's like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm getting myself arrested. And she's like, oh. Yeah. And, and I'm sorry, like, Carly is really bad at this because she's so impatient. You know, Franco gets, you know, into a cell, and, you know, he's, you know, doing his best to pump Carlos for information. And Carly keeps, like, coming to check on him because she's impatient. And I'm like, bitch, come the fuck down. Give the man some time. Yeah, you know? it's barely been a few hours in in-universe in, 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 in time. Yeah. 
And but it was really cute when she uh, you know came down to to talk to Franco because they're like making a show of you know I'm so mad at you well I hate you blah 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 and then like under their breast they're like I love you <laughs> yes that is that is that was great but you know what the plan works you know yeah. Franco gets hauled in and he tells Diane you know what don't represent me. I, I want to be put in. She's like, you fucking crazy. He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, not stupid. And he gets nope. in there and he's pumping Carlos full of, you know, for information and everything, you know, because of their mutual experience with Ava. And, and, and Carlos starts breaking down and he admits, yeah, I was the one who was at the quarter mains. And he's about to find out why. He was at the quarter mains. Why Ava sent him to the quarter mains to kill AJ? When the news about the accident reaches the PCPD, and Anna comes down, I, I, I think I think it was either Nathan or Anna had come down. Yeah, Anna, Anna had, yeah, Anna had come down uh, because she was going to try and get Carlos to talk again, and that's when um, uh, random red shirt came in and. Uh, you know, told her, you know, your your granddaughter's been in a car accident and, you know, mentioned Sabrina's name. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it wasn't random redshirt. It was Nathan. It was Nathan, I believe. I don't think so. I don't, I don't know. I, but either way, um, that, that ends up putting both Nathan and Anna at the scene when, uh, when the news – when the news reporters show up and of course Anna does her thing, you know, yeah, we'll let you know when we know more, yada, yada, yada. And then everybody's leaving, you know, Anna's taking Emma to the PCPD, you know, to, to kind of wait there in a safe spot. And Nathan has this opportunity and, and I'm, I'm glad he stayed professional for it. They, I'm glad they wrote him this professional, you know, he, he sits there cause you know, he is dying to tell Brit, Hey, look, you're my sister. Yeah. But he, he keeps it professional, says, yeah, were you, you know, were you involved, yada, yada, yada. And, of course, Britt, annoyed because half the town thinks if she's there, obviously she's caused it something, you know? Yeah. So – You know, I, she, her, her annoyance was completely justified. Oh, yeah. But, you know. <laughs> but Nathan's just doing his job. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, I mean, again, like – the PCPD is nothing if not incompetent. Yeah. Uh, because I cannot think of a single situation where someone would run a car off the road, mm -hmm. then turn around and come back and render assistance. No. They Why would they do that? That makes no goddamn sense. No. Not if they were intentionally trying to run them off the road, at least. Yeah, you know, and you know, Britt Brit and Patrick, yeah, they had all that history, but they they worked it out. They put that behind them. Mm -hmm. Like, they've actually had a pretty cordial relationship, you know. She and Sabrina, too, you know. Yeah. It, you know, and, and, you know, she's sitting there, and she's like, you know what, Sabrina, you helped me deliver my baby. Let me help deliver yours, you know. And, you know, the, Sabrina trusts Brit. Yeah, because you know, Brit her knows her shit. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, she didn't want Brit to be her doctor, which is understandable. But, I mean, she she does trust Brit. Yeah. At least on a professional level. On a personal yeah. level, that's a whole different story. Yeah. But, you know, that, again, you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad they wrote Nate more professional, though. Yeah. Instead of being like, oh my god, you're my sister. And, you know, it was like, it's like, okay, this can wait. <laughs> and, of <laughs> course, once the news reaches Carlos, Carlos is pissed. He flips the fuck out. And he's Holy like, shit. and he's like, I am entitled to a call. And, yeah. and he gets, gets to call Ava, and he says, yeah, you know what? If Sabrina or that baby is harmed, I'm going to kill you. Leaves a message on her voicemail because she's too busy doing something else, which we will, we're almost there, almost there, we're almost getting to. And then Anna fills him in a little bit more about what about the scene of the accident. And, of course, Carlos, yeah, I, I hope – I wouldn't mind seeing a roaring, roaring rampage of revenge from him. Yes. That would be awesome. Oh, but now I believe we have reached 
the point. Oh shit. Uh, Sunny and Ava in the crypt. Yeah, and you know it starts out okay because you know they're just talking and you know Sunny is talking about you know how guilty he feels and he's like you know you don't understand and Ava's like oh I understand and they're both like uh, you know getting very emotional about the guilt that they carry and all of a sudden they're making out and then I'm like. And the second they start making out, I'm like, what? It's like, oh, god damn it. For one, in a crypt? <gasps> really? What? I mean, and I mean. I'm like, I just like, no, 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 no. And also, no. You know, on some level, like, like when Morgan and Ava first, you know, had sex. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like, ew, 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 but on some level it did make sense. Yeah, they were both hurting a little bit, especially Morgan. Ava was there and to they, comfort him. <coughs> you know, then. they and they had a previous, you know, fairly friendly relationship, but also, you know, uh, uh, you know, I scratch your back, you scratch mine kind of relationship where, you know, it kind of made sense that he would feel loyalty to her in that way like like yes you know Ava and Sonny share this secret that Sonny killed AJ but I mean she's dating his son yeah and then she's gonna bang him see see my my issue the crypt in and of itself yeah it, it's it's strange it's weird but I've also made my own jokes about yo yeah I want to have sex in a graveyard although then again that is a graveyard not a crypt but, yeah, but they're they're fucking like on AJ's coffin, like yeah. At least part of the time they were fucking on AJ's coffin, or at least against it. I'm like, oh my god, what this the is hell? this is basically who wrote this? Who I, I, wrote this? I, I I don't know. It's, it's like. You know, AJ was AJ was joking about, yeah, once you go dance on my grave, and I'm sure even AJ is looking back and like, I told you to dance on my grave, not fuck on it. Yeah, like seriously. And then Morgan comes in, and they, by this time the two of them are are dressed, you know, mostly. And they're like, holy shit, what did we just do? That was really stupid. Why the fuck did we do that? Holy shit, what did we just do? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and of and, course, the belt hits them again. Boom. Yeah. And, you know, Ava's like, we don't tell anybody about this. And, uh... <laughs> and in comes Morgan, who had been looking for Ava because he noticed, oh, hey, her car's still here. That's weird. I figured she would have left. So he went looking for her around the grounds, found her in the crypt with Sunny, walks in, says, hey, what are you doing? And then within, like, five seconds, five to ten to thirty <laughs> seconds, he's like, wait, 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 don't bullshit me anymore. You two fucked. You two just had sex in here, and, you know, I'm like, yeah, it probably still smells like it. Yeah, that's the like, only explanation, because it's like, otherwise, uh, like like I, I tweeted, like I mentioned, on, I think it was on Tumblr. I, I was like, okay, how the hell did you make that leap, Morgan? I mean, granted, you're right, but with, with the explanation that we're given on screen, how the fuck did you do that? You know, you could, you could say that, you know... They just looked guilty, and that's how he inferred it. But no, I'm saying, like, I'm saying, like, he could smell it, like. Yeah, because man, like, I don't, I don't want to. Because <laughs> basically, I, they're, I have they're... been, I have been, I have been in a small space where other people were fucking, and yes, you can tell that someone was fucking in there. Oh yeah, that's... that is not a very large space. Yeah, yeah. Uh... you can. Okay, you could. Uh, I imagine it would smell like a porn set after everybody's done shooting. No pun intended. Yeah, I don't. It's, <laughs> I'm just like, what in the hell? Yeah, you know, your juices <sighs> do have. They do have an odor to them, whether you like them or not. And and so of course Morgan goes on this whole big "you betray me" speech. Everyone betray me, or at least you two guys betray me. And he because is justified. He is yes. justified. And it's funny because he gives Ava actually a very similar speech to the one 
that Nicholas gave Brit in, in that he's like, you know what, everybody warned me about you. Everybody, everybody tried to tell me what kind of person you were, and I defended you. I didn't believe them. And here I am, and I'm the idiot because they were right all along. They betray me, and I am the fool. Yes. Basically. And, and, and again, I cannot stress this enough. It is justified on Morgan's Absolutely part. Absolutely justified. Absolutely. This, yes. This is justified. This is justified. I can't say it any other way like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, you know, he r but rushes out and, and, and storms off. I think Sunny goes, does whatever, and Ava finally checks her messages, gets the call from Carlos, and she's like, oh shit. And she kind of gets a smile on her face. Yeah. Hee <laughs> hee I apparently, somebody, somebody tried to take her out. Which is, which is the reaction that we were mentioning earlier, when, when, when the TV was going, you know. Ava had the smirk, Luke was like, hmm, yeah, show you, you little scamp. You know, yeah. So you don't know which one really made the call, but hey, you know it works for their to their advantage. And I want to say I don't remember if it was in the episode or if it was just in the previews, but I think Ava did go to confront Carlos. Yes, that was at the end of the episode. That's right. Yeah. And speaking of the end of that episode, Carly eventually drops all the charges on Franco, gets him out, and they're like, "Hey, we got something to tell you about about." Carlo, about about what happened. He, we got yeah. something to tell you. We got some info for you. Oh God. <laughs> oh, I think. Oh, and like, there's like this small bit that that I neglected to cover earlier, just involving Rick coming to coming to Windermere. Like, like what? What? You just come over just to talk to Elizabeth, and then they just like you own the place, or what have yeah. you? You know, no knocking on the door. Although the butler let him in, so whatever. Yeah. And it's like, and of course, Rick and Nick get into a little bit of thing here, and then Nick and Elizabeth, not Nick, but Rick and Elizabeth are alone, rather. They talk, and he and Rick is like, I'm going to fight for your love. I'm like, dude, calm your tits. Yeah, and I'm just like, you know, Rick, Rick is very possessive about Elizabeth in a way that I really don't think he uh, is justified in being. No. Because, you know, she is kind of, you know, put up with him, but she really hasn't said, uh, you know, yes, let's give this another try. You know, she's kind of emotionally exhausted at the moment. She's kind of been through some shit. She got shot. Um, yeah. And she really doesn't, you know, doesn't really want all of these gestures from him. And he just kind of is oblivious. And it's just one of those things where, uh, you know, it's clearly not really about her. It's more about him. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's like, Rick, cool off. Back off a bit, man. Back off, back off. Go over here. Go over here. See, see, look, look, at, look at Dr. Westbourne. Look at Dr. Westbourne, you know. You know, well, oh, no, no, no. She's you. No, bad, bad example. Bad example. Um, <laughs> um, look at Diane Miller. No, wait, no. She's dating one of Sunny Sentiment. Never mind. Um, <laughs> uh, let's look at Ava. No, she just recently got dicked by Sunny. No. Um, and plus, she's a mob boss herself, technically. Yes. Um, oh God, who else? Okay. Oh, uh, um, Jordan. There you go. You know, uh, we don't know she's attached to anybody. Yeah, she's she's. Well, of course, she is trying to get back in with the mob and the drug dealing, too. God, who yeah. else is there for Rick? God damn. I don't know. Tell him to go back where he came from. I mean... <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a thing, too. But, you know, in a way, I kind of want to see where, what they're going to do with Rick in Port Charles. Yeah. I want to see what they'll do with him. Because, yeah, because they're really... Still don't know why he's there. Yeah, supposedly, you know, he says he's back to try and make amends, partial part, in one part with Molly, you know, bond with his daughter. Why he wasn't doing more of the five years besides, you know, Skype calls and everything. Which, when when I've heard other characters talk, well, we were youth past five years. It's like, what do Skype calls not mean anything to these people? Yeah, I mean, it's like, come on. I mean, it's better than just being a disappeared dad. I mean, he's at least communicating with his daughter. That's true. 
So it, it's not like he's doing absolutely nothing. He is doing something. Oh, God. And, and But still, Rick, cool your tits, man. Cool your tits. <laughs> I mean, hey, what about that one nurse that Michael boned for a little bit? Oh, you know. the one that uh, we saw like twice and then never again. Yeah, you know, there you go. You know, nurse hottie right there. Nurse hottie pants. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, of course. I thought that actually entered my mind. Uh, I think it was. Uh, I want to say it was Morgan and Nicholas. I, I think you know, like like after all of this stuff is blown up with the betrayals and everything, I get, I want to see them both get drunk at a bar, and then um, slash fiction happen. <laughs> Because that would be hilarious, and just throw everybody for a loop. Like, wait, what the fuck, Morgan? I didn't realize you swung that way, man. Nicholas, <laughs> and then even that would even bring Victor back. And be like, Nicholas, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, Dad, what were you doing with Uncle Morgan? Don't worry about it, son. Yes. <laughs> <It would> be... <laughs> Slash fiction writers to your keyboards. I want to see this you know, happen. You could just write it for yourself, since apparently that's the pairing that you want. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. I, I don't have the knowledge set for it. As much as yeah, as much. sure you don't. I <laughs> yeah, I'll believe that when I see it. Well, my knowledge set is more heterosexual. So you say. Mm. <laughs> you know, well, there is that one Diamanda Hagen review where where yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how many years has that been? God damn, I'm I'm still on that. <laughs> oh, long time ago. Yes. Oh, so over this over this next time period, over this next week, what I wonder what's going to end up happening. How everything is going to end up turning out as usual. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, I, I want to see what's going to happen. How is Luke going to be found out? Because he's, yeah. he's starting to crack a little bit. Well, it, I think he's probably going to be found out because he can't fucking leave any women alone. He even hit on Ava. Yeah. And Ava, like, I love the way she handled it. She just kind of, like, takes his hand and puts it back on his own chest and just walks away. Yes. Because <laughs> she's just like, I am not dealing with that shit right now. <laughs> yeah. Plus, if she had to, she could be like, bitch, I could cut you and kill you. Yeah. And you know, Kiki doesn't get it from nowhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, both her parents, I, I, you know, as we've seen demonstrated, they could fight if need be. Yeah. You know, Silas can. Ava definitely can. And she's a good, and she's sort of a decent shot with the damn uh, rifle too. I mean, if Olivia hadn't gotten in the way, we wouldn't have Franco. True. So yeah, <laughs> we're at, we're at Sean sitting there. Yeah, can't can't hit. Mister, advantage. I was a sniper in Afghanistan. Yeah, which oh oh yeah. More one other thing. That's where Morgan ended up going. He went to the Metro Court. Do try oh, and yes. tell Olivia. <laughs> you know, and I have to say, I don't blame him at all. Olivia does have a right to know. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, you know that that childhood love you know, that 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 you've been so enamored with. That is also my father. Yeah, he went and put his dick in his arch enemy's sister. Yeah. There. So you know, yeah, on on, on AJ Quartermain's fresh tomb, you know, grave casket thing. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's it's yeah he that's that's what he's doing. That's how he's getting. That's how he's dealing with his guilt over whatever it is. I don't know. Uh, you know and, and there was uh, and there was actually some moments with uh, Duke and Olivia at that at at some point too, which is yeah because Duke, nice. Duke was supposed to meet Anna there, but you know obviously she didn't make it because her granddaughter was in a car accident. Mm -hmm. uh, and to, to his credit, Duke's like, Duke, you know, just kind of shrugs it off because, you know, she probably does this shit all the time. Yeah, uh, and it's the nature, you know, and as a cop, this kind of yeah. shit happens all the time. Like, like, well, like you said, you know, I mean, it's like it's the nature of the business. Sometimes shit like this happens, and Duke and is so, very understanding. And so, you know, he and Olivia just sit down and, and talk for a while, and Olivia's like, you know, 
I, he did he tell did Sonny tell you anything about what's eating at him? Because I'm really worried about him. And you know, Duke keeps his mouth shut. Yeah, even though he and, can say, "Yeah, I, I think AJ was shot by Sonny." You know, oh. and uh, you know, he just is like, you know, uh, yeah, Sonny hasn't told me anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, sure, he hasn't. Yeah, flashbacks tell you otherwise, buddy. Uh, yeah. I'm just waiting for it to come out that Ava was the one who shot Connie. Yes. Because now, because once that comes out, oh my god, I, yeah. I, I that is. That may be one of the times that could get me to root for Sonny again. Would be when he finds out that Ava is the one who killed Connie. And he totally just fucked her. Yeah, I would be like, you know what? You know, yeah, yeah. Whatever he does to Ava in light of that news, I will be behind him. You know, just just you heard it here. That will get me behind him once that yeah. comes out. Ah, uh, because yeah. I mean, I mean, no matter how much I, I despise Sonny at this point, you know, Ava pretty much t shook up his entire world by killing Connie. Yeah, yeah, it was nothing personal. It was because Connie found out a little too much information, and it's – again, it's one of those nature of the business things. So to Ava, it was nothing personal, but to Sonny, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and of course – and then of course I can go right back to saying, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you you feel worse now because you killed AJ and you killed an innocent man. Mm -hmm. Good job. Mm -hmm. Good job. Good job. <laughs> uh, because he totally did. Uh, but on that, I believe we've covered everything for this particular show, this episode. Yep. Oh, so uh, we 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 actually are doing good on time this week. <laughs> So uh, with that, we are going to get out of here, and if we want to find you on social media, where can we find you, Namio? You can find me on Twitter at, uh, at Naomi Washburn. Uh, you can find me on the fabulous rtgomer.com. Uh, you can find me on Tumblr, uh, Namio's Corner, and you can find me on Etsy at Namio Stained Glass. Sweet! And, if and you... where can we find you? Well, I'm just about to tell you. You can find me on the Twitters and the Tumblers at gomer 21 X. You can also find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. Mm -hmm. And if you like these, and if you like my productions, you like this show, my other shows, my Let's Plays, or what have you, and you want to help support, you know, all of these shows to keep them going and coming and and being produced and thrown out there for your enjoyment well if you if you if you if you have a dollar to spare head on over to patreon.com slash gomer to one double x and you know you know donate it's a monthly thing and you get some, and i'm still working on getting some more stuff but the stuff i have available right now for patreon rewards i, th I think they're pretty cool especially if you do 20 dollars a month you get ad space which is among the cheapest you can get on the net right now. So you know, what, what, you know, you have nothing to lose. Plus, if you want some really great artwork, which, which at some point is going to be replaced, because you see the, you see the artwork. If you're watching it on YouTube, you see the artwork there. That's going to be updated at some point, and that will be updated by my lovely girlfriend Becky, who has Aww. her own Patreon page at Patreon.com/slash Becky Hop. Go out. She's oh. awesome. She is. Oh my God, she is. And. Um, Go over there, check out her artwork. You know, commission some stuff from her, and if if you if you uh, throw some money, throw enough money at her, she'll do an animation for you. Psst, she's an award-winning animator. No joke. <laughs> so yes, so check her out. Check out all, check out all this stuff, and uh, we will catch you guys next time. Thank you guys for listening, and until next time, this is Gomer, the ranting thespian, with Namio, signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.